I don't want to be one of them wanker actors. That, but I, I don't like it. I don't like watching it. I find it difficult to watch. Hello, I am Joe Gilgan, and I'm just going to be watching some of the clips, previous clips of my career, way back when, some of them, actually. Quite looking forward to getting into it. Should we have a go? Hey, all. What's the matter? Nothing. What's with face ache? You look upset. What's the do? Nothing. It's all people picking on me, taking the mic out of me. All right. All right, so this is this is England. Um, yeah, we had to reshoot it. And I think even Shane was finding his feet a little bit. I think he went home the first day and watched the footage. And I think he might have felt like I hadn't... We didn't feel like Woody was the leader, I think, it was the problem. So it was down to the wire, really. And I think Shane later told me, he was like, oh, we kind of wanted you, I kind of wanted you, but you had all this shaggy hair and this fucking beard. And I think a lot of people were just struggling with the idea of... Will you look the part? I eventually did get the role. I remember the first thing I did was panic because, you know, I don't read well. And, and you know, the, the, the script, I've got to have to learn this big script. And there's a lot in it. We were at a bar and he'd just given me the job. And I said, um, dude, I, I don't know whether I can learn all this. He was like, you don't have to. Like, we, we improvise everything. Like, you may as well just throw it in the fucking bin. Well, so that's what I did. I threw it in the bin. And I remember he said something about it being a red carpet as well. I was like, it's going to be a proper film, this then. He was like, oh, yeah, it'll be a proper film. Like, it was like, what, on a cinema? It was like, yeah, it'll go on a cinema. There'll be like a red carpet in that. But like, fuck, there'll be a red carpet, you stupid cut. Anyway, of course, red carpet, cinema, way bigger than I ever imagined. So, so yeah, yeah. But what immediately what's... What's for all me is I little Tom is. I've just been on the phone to him yesterday. Um, I mean, he was a fucking tiny little fella for his age. He was a pain in the ass. He was a young lad and he was going through a lot. He was tired. Uh, his mum wasn't so good. I think he was quite a vulnerable young lad when he was when we were doing the film. He struggled, you know. This was a brand new thing for him. It's no fucking wonder. And I think he handled it amazingly well. For a lot of his age, it's kind of shaped the man that exists today. I mean, I've just got off the, yesterday. Um, I was talking to him, and he's a man now. It's fascinating. You know, he's married. He's he's way more of a man than I am. Jack O'Connell, there, he's like a bloody megastar now. You know. This next clip is this is England ninety. And I watched this last night. Now, I don't want to be one of them wanker actors, that, but I, I don't like it. I don't like watching it. I find it difficult to watch. Like, I, I, the day was a difficult day. I don't like seeing, seeing Stephen like that. I don't like seeing myself in that state. And I feel terrible for Vicky. Like, and it all came back last night. The whole fucking thing all over again. I mean, you know, this is great fun. But in a minute, I'll get off the fucking phone from you. I'll be back on my own again. <laughs> so, like, I don't really... I just... You know, working with someone like Stephen is an absolute... It's an education, like, um, to watch his process and to, you know, to watch how much it matters to him. Like... Uh, he's a phenomenal talent. Like, I'm very lucky to have worked with him. You're a proper little skinhead, then, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look like a little action man or something. <laughs> like a little Barbie doll you've dressed up and all that. Look. What I've what I've realised about a lot of a lot of good actors is good artists, good musicians, good any kind of creativity, I guess, is the fucking hard work. Uh, they're not always easy. Uh, it's not to say they're bad people. I mean, Stephen's a fucking really amazing lad. He's a good, brilliant dad to his kids, fantastic husband to his wife. I'm sure she'd probably tell you different. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's a good man. He's a good human being. That said, he's, he's intense playing combo. My experience with Steve is only... I've only been with combo. I've never been with any of his other characters. He does tend to play fucking lunatics because he is one. Um, he he uh, accesses it quick and he's very passionate about it. Uh, his process seems to be he talks a lot about it and he has to work it out in his head. 
And once he's figured it out, he, he, you can see the excitement. That's it. That's it. And he'll do something like that. He'll do some Tom Cruise like hand gesture that like, scares the shit out of everyone. Um, but he's passionate about everything he does. When he hugs you, it hurts. He gives you a mean hug, Stephen. Um, what he's doing, a lot of working class men do it. They're showing you how much they love you by squeezing the fucking life out of your frail, brittle body. Look at my body, man. I like a traveller's dog. Traveller's dog under here. I'm in a bad way. There's nothing to me. If you hug me, like you'll break fucking ribs. Like digging his fingers in your tiny back. Like I'm very, very lucky to have been a part of that. Like a scene like that. The stars kind of align with it, and, and you end up getting something like. That. But yeah, it, it's fucking disturbing, man. It kind of messes with me head. I remember the way we the way we film it. Uh, is so that, you know, Shane's very clever. He'll film it in such a way where there's a build-up. So I wouldn't have seen Stephen that day, you know. Stephen will have been fucking locked away somewhere on his own. You all go mad. You all go fucking mad, like, making this is England. It's a very, it's a, it's the best and worst time of your life. It's like your 20s. <laughs> yeah, so the last day, the last day of filming this is England, Fuck, man. Like, you know what? I've almost blocked it out in the air, I think, somehow. I just, like, I remember jumping around on a makeup bus. We jumped about, we dancing on this makeup bus to Shimmy's awful music. And um, it was just this moment of pure elation, you know. I think I'd done some drugs as well, which just enhanced everything that bit more. Amazing. An amazing, like, undescribable almost, you know, when, when I think about it now, um, all of us together like that, a real gang that really loved each other, warts and all, you know, and we'd survived it. We'd all survived it together. And from a personal point of view anyway, I just feel so lucky to have been a part of that and to have been worthy of it, you know, um, I've really just the fondest memories of being with them all. Uh, we're all still mates. Shimmy still does me fucking head in. Bollocked him the other day. He wants to do a fucking interview. I don't like doing them interviews. And he wanted to do one with me in his van. I was like, I'm not doing it. Anyway, he's fallen out and I thought I'd do it. <laughs> Fuck him. He always wants something. And do you know what? Like thinking about it now, one last time going through it all. I'll never not miss it. I'll never not be friends with it. Like, I love Shimmy. He's a fucking pain. I love soccer. I love Tom, I love Vicky, Chanel, Trev, Gadget. Like, fucking all of them. All of them. Perry. Like, I've been so lucky to start my career off with those people. Like, and on such an amazing project. I had no idea. I had no idea how lucky I was. I was just a naive 18-year-old career criminal. He had his head up his ass, you know. All right, so let's have a look at Misfits. Just don't go anywhere near her. Do you hear me? She doesn't need to say this shit. No, well, I think she does. So Rudy's washing... Well, he's not washing shit off his knob. He's having a fucking word with himself. He's more sensitive side. And this is early on in the character, we find in the character. I had to work out how to play the nuances between the two, really. One of the one thing that stands out about that scene was the fight. Um, when you're fighting yourself, you have so we had to get a body double. We had to get someone who's, who physically matched my body type exactly. Um, and I mean, fuck, you have a fight with yourself. You literally do. Um, and what was important was one of the things that we had to keep, fucking keep going on over and over again was the bloody fall into the bath and the shower curtain coming over the top of us. We had to fall and orchestrate it so the shower curtain came over. We didn't have stuntmen for this. It was like, you know, I don't think there was a massive budget on Misfits in all truth, looking back. And, um, you know, I fucking hurled myself into this bath, twatted the back of my head. I remember that, like, blunt force trauma instantly. Like, ah, oh, fuck. Um... And I just remember the curtain being this massive dilemma getting it up. I said I was uh, washing my cock. Yeah, I've just slipped on the soap and impaled myself on some scissors. Oh, man, that shit. But we, like, 
it was just amazing fun, man. Like, I remember reading those scripts and fucking crying, laughing. I like, really looked forward to reading my stuff, you know, like really narcissistic. I only read my bits. Um, but I loved playing Rudy. And, and that there, that particular clip, especially that section of, of all the footage, that is, that I would say that's early on. That's me trying to figure out how to play both these two characters. They're quite similar there, I noticed, when I watched the two Rudys. They're not that dissimilar to each other. Yeah, but what do I know? I'm just another shit-faced Irishman. Am I not? <laughs> Am I not just that? <laughs> Um, yeah, so the preacher scene on the plane. Let's talk about that there quick, because it right. So we had we when we were filming there. When you're filming a, a pilot episode, you've got a lot to get in there. It's like a mi especially in the states. It's like a mini film, um, a miniature film uh, shot on, t on a TV camera, TV budget really. Um, so you don't have a lot of time. We had this amazing group of stuntmen, Joy Co John Koyama and his stunt team. Um, out in the States. Phenomenal. <laughs> we start breaking down. So what you, it's like a fucking dance routine. I'm sure everyone's heard that a million times. I know that's boring, but it is. Like, it's about distance and selling these moments, you know. Now we have very little time uh, but we start breaking down the moves. I fucking dialed it in. I really wanted to be, I wanted to, I didn't want them to use me double. I had a stunt double, but I wanted to be in it as much as I fucking could. You know, I, uh, you know, it's my first time in America. Um, and, I, and, I, and I fucking wanted it. I wanted it back. I still want it. I still want it. I want all of it. I want everything. And I want it now. You know, I'm impatient for it, dude. Like, um, and there I am doing the fucking thing. The pressure really is on. So I learn it really quick because I'm shitting myself. Like, I'm scared of not being able to do it. And it ends up being this, like, standout part of the pilot. Like, I'm, I'm really lucky that I got that. The art department had made this incredible plane that you could collapse and get these different angles from. It's just fucking brilliant, man. Um, the concept was amazing. The character was a brilliant character. Like, really good fun. I had the best, the best fucking time on Preacher, dude. It was sick. I'm extremely proud to have come from a British background in, in, in TV and film. Like, I think what we do with, with what we've got at times is fucking phenomenal. Like, we're, I really am so proud of what we are uh, and where I've come from. And to be able to come back to it and be accepted again, it's a massive, massive deal. Because I'd fucked off for a, for a year or two there, you know, um, came back and everyone was still cool. Like, you know, so that's a, that was a big deal for me. Like, um, almost validated a bit of love I might have for myself. Like, you know, to be accepted again. So you smile, then you could. Eh? No, wrong person. It's not me. You are? I'm not him, am I? He's dead. When we started making Brassic, it had been in development for about five years, um, I'd say. I'd been playing around with a lot of these stories for many years before that. Um, you know, bouncing ideas around in my head. I'm not sure why. I don't think I had much intention behind them. I just enjoyed telling stories. And... Um, I met Dominic West whilst filming. A lot of people throughout my career would say, you must do something with these stories you're telling your ideas. You must do something. But I needed to meet the right one. You know, like, look at me, man. I'm, f I'm fucking covered in tattoos. I look and sound like a, a reprobate. Well, I am a reprobate. But, like, I do have ideas. My ideas aren't terrible. And, and I just needed someone to see that. And that person was David Livingston. Initially, it was Dominic West who sort of encouraged me to go and talk to David. But then once I had, that was it, man. Like, it just took off. Yeah, well, one of our one of our selling points for Barassi was, you know, we you know, we all felt it was this underserved audience. There's, like, so many little towns all over 
the UK that are sort of that aren't represented unless it's a fucking soap opera or a depressing documentary about people bene- uh, doing fraud ben- ben- benefit in the fraud uh, fraud in the benefit system. Sorry. So like, I don't know, man. I just thought there's an underserved audience there, um, and the people in those towns will relate to everything we're talking about. It's about a little town. It's about one of those little towns. X million, you know, there's X million towns all over the north of the UK, at least. And um, and down south, all over. So, like, you know, I just, I thought there was an underserved audience and a gap in the fucking market, which there was. You know, we've seen, we've seen what it looks like to be a gang from the city. We know, like, I wanted to show you a, a different outlook on, on, on criminality and like my experience of it was funny like silly you never get a fucking thing you know you know like when it's not glor like we don't want it we didn't want to glorify it too much like we wanted you to be able to laugh at the stupidity of it all more than anything and not have those like super cool moments you know what you see because they don't exist you're just shitting yourself all the time paranoid you know are you sure you're not in fuck i just said that i'm not in you're getting me cross now. Listen to me. I'm dead. I'm dead. Shane Meadows and This Is England, dude, they've had this massive, massive impact on, on definitely on the way I've approached Barassi. One thing that I took away was honesty. Just be honest and truthful in everything you do. Like, and sometimes it's a pain in the fucking ass, but it's important. People can see it, like... You know, and it does matter. So I don't know whether that means anything to anyone, but like honesty and truth, they're two things that Shandy will will compromise on. You know, and and I did the same thing. Like do the right thing by people, and when it comes to being on set and being creative, be honest and be truthful with whatever it is. Like don't play to the don't play for laughs. Just play it as it is. Like. And tonally, everything should fall together, which it often does. You know, but I learned that from Shane. And also, listen to people. Don't be a dictator. Let people do their thing, you know, and trust. But tr- like, let people know they're trusted, they're good at the job, um, and to let them go, go and fucking do it. Like, not be over everyone's fucking shoulder every five minutes. Like, do you know what? I would love to tell everyone that you will see a, this, another This Is England. I'd love to tell you that you will. In all truth, I really don't know whether there will be. I personally feel, and people probably won't want to hear this, but I think it's the right time to leave it. I think, we, I think you know, like when you look at good good quality TV, look at Faulty Towers, right? A fucking amazing TV show. Like, um, did they get like two seasons? I think they get like two. And, and, and then that was it. It's sort of family because the the for whatever reason they, I mean it's a sin really that they didn't do a third because I've no doubt that they, that would have been a belter as well. But the 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 gave in while the going was good and it's it's fun it's thought of family. This is the thing, like, do you want it? The people want more, right? Do you want them leave? Did they want more because it was good? Doesn't necessarily mean you should give it them. Is what I'm saying. Like, just because people want more. They want more because it was good. Sometimes you have to know when to put something to bed, you know. Um, that said, who fucking knows, man? Shane's a nutcase. He has ideas all the time. He's like, his brain's restless. So another fucking three or four years probably blagging us down to what the chef will do another one. <laughs> Give me another mental breakdown.